Welcome back everybody another snoot game and yeah welcome I don't know last we left off we were, we were in date eating pizza or some shit I can't remember but to, for me to remember you have to subscribe like or watch this video up to the end or my other videos but yeah let's get back to the game enough of this dabble rabble rabble is she like on heroin or something ha huh, no she's just always in her own little world nothing is ever wrong there's no flaws with anything no concern is worth worrying about. Ah, uh, yeah, that can't be healthy. Eh, I may do so far. But for what it's worth, you still got Trish Reed and Nazer. Yeah, the one whose horn is more important than finding a place. My baby, Shishidi baby brother, and Reed. Fang groans as she leans back in her seat. The new guy is the only one I can rely on. My life sucks. Hmm, I don't know. We haven't found a venue and our show is in a week. Ah, fucking Naomi, fucking dad. On the flip side, we're getting some of your favorite pizza at one of the pricier Thailand places around for free too. But the venue, we still have time. So pizza first and we find a place for your show. Someone say pizza? Hey, Baba the Buddha, big up, it's a pizza feed. I got someone order a fucking pizza. Most slides a large pizza onto the table in front of us. Uh, a pizza with extra sausage, anchovies, pepperoni, and ham, also known as the most original meteor pizza. Lucy's favorite. I go by Fang now, actually. Whoa, 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 the youth are getting up with you with me. You're trying to make old Mo confuse you, punk? He gives Fang a light noogie. So, what have you punks been up to? Actually, Mr. Mo, we were going to ask. Mr. Young Punk, you don't need to be so formal. Ah, oh, fuck my head. You youngins, I heard you talking about your parents. Oh man, here comes the lecture. You know, the best part being young is... Mo! We got a code K on line 1. Mo hangs his head in despair. Oh, that... Thought kids has got a piece of mother to deal with. Mo stumps away to the receptionist's desk, leaving Fang the pizza in me. Hey, free food! Fang piles three slices on a plate, catching a few of the anchovies before they slide off. I think I'll only take one. I'd rather not get heartburn at 18. Man, this place sure isn't historical for no reason. Even something as ridiculous as this tastes as this tastes phenomenal. Good thing it's free. I'd be willing to pay a premium for this stuff. Kicks Comet Pizza's ass any day of the week. It really hooks you in, don't you? I don't it, sorry. Oh, uh, I didn't realize I was in my own world for a bit. Uh, yeah. It's real good. Huh, she's already down to s two slices. Shame I have to limit myself around the good stuff. Fang picks up her last slice, tosses it upwards. And snaps it out of the air with one bite. Wow, cool trick. Do you do parties? While well, she raises her middle finger, the remark, the grin on Fang's fa face says it's more out of humor than malice. You gonna finish that? I look at my half eaten slice. I guard my hoard with an arm bulwark. Mine. Heh, <laughs> didn't want it anyway. Mine. I'm quick to finish off my slice to keep it to myself while Fang goes for a third helping. The pizza doesn't last, sadly, as you continue to take slices. That, that must have been one hell of a pizza, now I'm getting hungry. It's l Comment down below, do you like pizza? Of course, a sleepy, who doesn't love pizza? Unless you're allergic to dough. Which can happen, or some specific ingredient, so I'm sorry for that. Its life is ended in a matter of minutes, when otherwise I would have committed past the side in an hour. By the end, I'm satisfied, enjoying the feeding of the itis. I this means you're bloated, if I recall. Ah, uh, Uncle Mo knows just how to make it. Yeah, your uncle is pretty cool. Fang gets out of her seat, legs unsteady as she fights off the need for a well-needed nap. I'll see you at the front. I've got a serious need for real, for real this time. I snicker and nod. Sure, leave me to deal with your uncle. I force myself out of the booth and casually mend her. To the reception area. 
Mo is there placing the receiver with the Dez's phone back. Hey, son, you just enjoyed the meal? Definitely feel like I'm a blackout any second. Ha, huh, that's what I like to hear. Glad to make his date then. Ah, uh, we aren't. No? Could have fooled me with that disaster you called flirting. No, really. Fang's looking for a venue. Her band is planning a show for next week. Really now? Oh, sorry, I couldn't read that as well. Why not have it here then? I look around at the restaurant trying to find any real place for the band to actually play. Hey, don't sweat the details, kid. Mo grins. Me and the boys are used to making room for shows. You just tell me little Lucy got the place, then you sure to sweep her off her feet. Uh, oh, what, what? I. No. And in that, EXE has failed. Ah, to be young and in love. Listen here, Anon. I segrete de la mort, the secret to love. It's not shared, misery. You can complain about all the little details in life. But don't, don't fix those problems. However, you just can't be trying to do everything for her neither. Otherwise, she'd just expect her to fix all her problems for her. The secret is support. Support? Ah, you's got to be her support. She's got to fix her own problems, but you's got to back her up on them. Ah, from what I hear from our boy Nasa, you've already been done that. I suppose I have, like at her band practice or on the roof. Like now. <laughs> bada bing, bada boom. Back to work, Jerry. Anyway, be good to her, Annan. She'll be good to use. I raised her right after all. Uh, thanks, Mo. Hey, anytime. I've been hanging around you fools for too long. I can't just ignore the kitchen anymore, you still know? Give little Lucy my regards, eh? Sure. Cool, Uncle. Mo saunters back to the kitchen. Now that I think about it, how does he cook with those little arms? And then I played a little game called Dinopunk. And I've seen what T-Rexes with their short stubs can do. They can fix, they can make, and they could create. I look a bit closer, there's several toy claws hanging on a rack just inside the kitchen door. Somehow, I don't think that was something I was supposed to see. Alright, I'm back. Let's hit the road. Maybe we'll find somewhere to play before sundown. Actually, we really don't. Fang freezes in place. How? Your uncle. You asked Uncle Mo if my band could play? Yeah, he seemed pretty ex excited about it. He's got a stage ready and everything. Fang still isn't moving. Did I do something wrong? It's a blur of motion. Aww. One second, Fang looks like she's going to start hyperventilating. Next, it's like I'm wrapped in a blanket of down feathers. Damn, there's gotta be comfortable. <clears throat> it's gotta be real comfortable being hugged by someone with feathers. Being shaken from side to side with a <laughs> with a ti tinnitus inducing scream right in my ear. Ah, we got a venue! It's so infectious. My arms reflexively support her wrapping around below her rings. Fang's arms are wrapped around my shoulders as she clings to me. I feel something warm, soft, and somewhat moist press against my cheek. We got a venue, we got a venue, we got a venue! Ah, all moving stops and reality resumes. Fang's wings withdraw from around us. She pulls away until only her hands are on my shoulders. My hands are now at her sides and I can feel her warm scales on my palms. Oh. Wow. I, uh... Huh. It's the sound of clapping that causes us to jump apart, faces bright red and breathe rap breath rapid. Back at the kitchen door, Zmo clapping loudly with his minuscule arms. Uh, I suppose we, uh, um, call Nazer? Yeah, and tell him, right? Totally. Worm, worm drama's got a venue. Fang smiles softly and nods. Good thing now me put Nazer's number in my phone, even though I didn't ask for it. The tone rings twice. Yes? Hey Nazer, hold on, I'll put you on the speaker. Go ahead. Mission accomplished, we got the venue set up. Oh, they did. 
That's great! Yeah, we're at Dynamo's place in Little Trudon. Cool. I'll bring the NASCAR over in a jiffy. I'm going to punch him. You sure you want us to get you now? Now that you have business out of the way, you and Fang could do something fun. Uh, you know it may not be such a bad idea. Even if it's an idea from the Orchid Oppressor. Can't believe we got played like a damn fiddle by a, by a goody two-shoes dinosaur. Who would have known? Good lord, I'm never going to be able to play golf again. I'll pass, it's getting pretty dark. Aww. Alright, stay put and we'll be there soon. Someone's car is outside and it's pissing me off. Alright, see you. Alright, someone's using their motorcycle. It's you're revving it, alright. All that's left is to wait a few minutes for the ride to get here. Fang is sitting on a bench in front of one of the restaurant windows. She's humming to herself and her tail is drumming Eurobeat on the bench. I take a seat next to her. By right now the plaza has cooled down, most shops have closed and the only people still out are returning home after the long day. The two of us sit in a in companion, uh, companionable silence save for Fang's humming and tail drumming. Her mood is contagious and soon enough I'm humming with her. I already know the song. It's from the roof. Except more. More. Happy. The scene is great. Just Fang and I on a bench in the warm, waning sunlight in the middle of a deserted plaza. Taking the moment in, I almost don't notice Fang scooting closer to me. Oh my god, what is this? This is some. This is giving me diabetes, man. This is some sugary shit. This is some sugary shit, man. Alright. It's real sweet. Mom, Dad, we're home. The ride back to Fang's house went by uneventfully. Fang and I didn't talk about what happened, so Nazer didn't have any aneurysm. Oh, welcome home, Nazer dear. How did your date go? I'm just dying to know. I am also interested. I don't know how, but he's looking into the exact center of my pupils with no margin of error. So, I uh, ain't none. How was your trip with my little girl? Dad, why don't you go get ready for bed, Lucy? Fang glowers? Lucy, your mom? I look to Fang? Okay, yeah, it was a date. It went well, sir. What did... We were able to find a venue and I met Fang's Uncle Mo. Fang's dad sputters. I've half a mind of bringing you to the station, boy. And the other half of testing my new nightstick on you. Dear, not in front. I wouldn't mind doing this again. Oh, wow. The balls on Annan. The look on Fang's face is really cute. I don't like how Naomi was like grinning there. She was like trying to be Aizen or some shit in Bleach, you know? She Get the fuck out of here. I'm so, I'm so happy for her, too. I wave as I turn to the door. I'll see you at school, Fang. Y yeah, you too, Annan. With that, I exit the door. Once it's closed, I can feel all that bravado evaporate and my legs turn to jelly. I think that's enough excitement for one day. My first step toward forward towards the bus stop is so wobbly, I worry I'll end up in Fang's mom's rose bush. It would probably be a good idea to sit a bit and catch my breath before going home and take a seat on the curb just outside Fang's house. The door behind me slams open and I jerk around to see Nazer being shoved down the steps. And don't come back until you're finished thinking. The door slams again and I hear Moreau sigh. Well if it isn't my boy, my bro Nazer. Oh man. Annan? Yeah? Why are you sitting here? Just catching my breath. Your dad's a bit... Harsh? Homicidal but close enough. Nazer huffs and shoves his hands back in his pockets. You know you're the reason dad kicked me out, right? What? I know he's pissed. I so much as look at Fang, but what did you do? Turns out they think you run off with Fang is just encouraging your degeneracy or something. <sighs> Sighing, Nazer drops to sit on the curb next to me. He kicks a rock clean across the road and into the neighbor's mailbox. Damn, this guy's perfect, man! Impressive. Now let's see Paul Allen's kicking of the, of the rock to the mailbox. Mm -hmm. Huh. Getting kicked out really got, that, got you that down? Sure. 
Convincing? What's the real answer? What's it to you? Not much, just figured I'd ask. He stretches his wings and lays back on the pavement. Just figures I, I'd get to this. Get to what? Me getting punished for Fang's issues. Mazer lays an arm over his eyes. Why'd you need to go alone? You saw her today, she was this close to kidding her girlfriend. Honestly, you should be thanking me for that. He, wa he waves me away at that. Feh. Go on. You aren't my therapist. Humor me. Nazar's arms flops away from his face and onto the concrete. Ah, uh, I mean, look at it from my perspective. Fang is always up to something stupid more often than not these days. She's arguing with either me or my parents. At this rate, Fang will end up a junkie or in prison somewhere. I cringe at the mental image of a junkie Fang. Mom and dad have pretty much accepted that, so who do you think all your hopes and dreams go to? Ah, the invisible responsibility, the shoulder to bear, the heaviness, the weight on those shoulders are heavy. I am there, I'm the oldest son, I have two younger siblings, sure it's not outright so, t t you know, of course, no one would, no parent would say, you will place all our bets on you, son. But you can feel the pressure, and it's suffocating. It's nerve-wracking. Me. With a growl, laser sits back up. It's like I'm not allowed to have problems of my own, not allowed to mess up or do anything less than the best. Judging by the trophy case at school, you aren't doing half bad. I wish it was an option to fail, I mean. Instead, I'm stuck with no room for error and still with a broken sister. And she's still my sister, you know? I can't help but be worried for her. But what can I do? She hates me and I can't bring up my worries with my parents. Even now, me notices I get stressed about it. I just want my sister to be happy, to go back to normal. But I don't even remember what her normal is. I don't have siblings myself, but... If I did, if I did, I certainly would have trouble doing all you're able to. That selflessness by itself should help you, right? Selflessness? You kidding me? Her friends would be destroyed if Fang just dropped all that. Who am I to even wish she were different? So you're getting all this worked up and you aren't sure it's even the right thing? Yeah, I guess so. I try and parse everything Nazer's bitch about up to now. Guess it's time for Dr. Moo's psychological response. You know, Nazer, have you ever considered just not? What? Nazer practically lunges at me. I hold my hands up in supplication. I consider what to say. Moe's advice drifts to the forefront of my thoughts. Hear me out. Just consider this. Maybe it's not your job. I mean, you'll go out of your way to try and help her. Hell, even Naomi has tried. But maybe Fang's problem is her problem to fix. But, 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 we met your uncle today. Uncle Mo? Yeah, and he had some advice for me. He said she needs someone to support her, not fix her problems for her. Isn't that what I've been doing? Remember the show in the auditorium? The perturbed pterosaur sags as he recalls that disaster. Oh. Look, man, you got a lot of problems of your own. Maybe you should handle those first before you try to fix your sisters. Ha. <sighs> Well, if Uncle Mo said so, but why did he tell you that? Ah, oh, shit. Uh, you know, just advice from an old guy. You know how they love to give advice. His head shakes side to side, dismissing my dismissal. No way, not Uncle Mo. He'd never give you the time of day. Shit. Shit. And more shit. Look, he just wanted to give me some advice for Fang and now I'm giving it to you, okay? So drop it. No way. Advice for Fang. Saying it was a date. Do you like my sister? I wasn't the one to call it a d that explains a lot. Shit. But I didn't. Oh god, what would dad think of the kids? What the fuck? Hell, if dad finds out at all. Naser! He pauses, the look of shock, disdain still stuck to his face. Like, this guy is a creep, man. At this point, it seems like you just want to be a stress mess. Maybe I do like your sister. Sure, she's rude, violent, and maybe a bit bipolar. She's impressionable, self-centered, stubborn, the list goes on. Let's go with that. Are you looking to taste some concrete, man? But beyond all that, there's more to her. 
like like her passion, Nazer. She adores music, adores playing music. And she has these moments where I can see the softer side of her. The pop of knuckles from Nazer tells me I should rephrase that. I mean, if it's like I've gotten to see a side of Fang that she hasn't shown anyone else, you know? A side that's willing to give a loser like me the time of day. And that's enough? I don't know, man. This is all uncharted water. So, like, how did you and Naomi get together? That is a very long story. How long? About two school semesters, 30th rack meets, and a school election. So about a paperback book then? Sure, why not? Nazer hums and reclines back into the pavement. Sheesh, how do you wind up talking about our love lives? I don't know, man. Speak for yourself, man. I know fuck all about this stuff. And you think I do? Naomi's the one that makes all the plans and stuff. Seems like she does that a lot. Just the way she is. Anyway, I think Dad's had enough time and beer to cool down now. How long has it been? About an hour, I think. Wait. I swiftly withdraw my phone to check the time. Oh fuck, I'm gonna miss the last bus. I could give you a lift. And let you find out I live in the shittiest part of town? Nah, it's fine. If I run, I think I can make it. Well, don't let me keep you. I'll catch you at school, Annan. Yeah, sure thing. And for what it's worth, you're not like the monkeys we hear about all the time on Dino News Network. The kind that hangs around this part of town called Skin Row, you know? Ah, the druggies. I'm just gonna ignore that, mm hmm? Thanks for sticking around a bit. It's nice to finally be able to tell someone all that. Well, we got a bro. I wave Nazer goodbye as I set, get up and start jogging for the bus stop. I'm mentally fatigued after everything that's happened today. Well, I'd be fatigued as well. I check my phone for the time. Hmm. I open up the browser and go to a familiar Sud Town sword swallowing IRC. Hey, Agates. Guess who just got back from a perfect date? Huh. 12 replies from a single post. I think that's a new record for me. Hopefully got, he actually caught the bus one week later. The week's been a mix of excitement and trepidation. More excitement from Fang and the band and trepidation on my part around Fang. Having come to terms with how I feel, I just can't stop noticing all the little things she does. Like her cute tail wagging to a silent tune. Or her weird and funny way of eating. Or how soft and huggable her rings look. Raptor Jesus, if this is what love is, I kind of want to sample buck, Buckshot, you know? And yet, I don't want it to stop. Even now, as Mo and Reed work on clearing the floor of tables and making a noise. And I'm drooling like an idiot as I watch Fang bend over a large amp. Ahem! Even now, her tail wags with that mysterious beat in her head. Ahem! Well, this is a thumbnail, boys. Get used to it. Not to mention the way those jeans hug her hips and uh, I am. Huh? Aren't you supposed to be helping? Hmm. Oh, oh shit, right. Yeah, yeah, right. Just moving this table. Haha. <laughs> I picked up the last table on the floor and hurriedly moved it to the suspiciously large storage room in the back of Dynamos. I set the table down with a rest right next to the seemingly out of place buckets of cement mix. Looking out from the closet, the joint is actually pretty big. There is a good 150 by 200 feet, so without the tables, there's enough space for at least a few hundred people. Impressed, I let out the low whistle. Phew, phew. I'm on time, right? Hey, it's Stella. Oh, pie. Hey. Oh, gee. Where did she come from? Hmm, who are you? We've met before. Whoa, whoa, wait, Stella, right? From the school gardens? She gleefully nods. Yes, Rosa should be coming any minute now, too. I haven't spoken to either of them since campus beautification. Well, other than Stella through the bathroom door, but that doesn't really count. But Fang and the rest will be happy they have at least two fans, right? You know, there's always room in the garden club if you still want to join Annan. There's no way I'm going back to that sort of, a, sort of prison labor. I look the pale green spine-covered thing up and down, including the Opai t-shirt she's wearing. What the fuck? Uh, you, you do know what your shirt says, right? 
Stella gives me a quizzical look and glances down at the shirt, her face turning bright red. Oh my, this was the only clean shirt I had. If I didn't feel the way I did about Fang, I think Stella's stammering was kinda cute. Suddenly, her face lights up and her eyes return to me. Wait, you like anime too, don't you? Play it cool, Anon. No need to reveal your power level. I've seen a bit here and there. Yeah, a, l a little bit. That's amazing. I don't have anyone else I can talk to about it. What's your favorite anime? I love Precure. Raptor Jesus on his cross of rock. It takes all my strength not to physically cringe. Ooh, we should watch it together sometime. I have the box set of every season. We could marathon it over a long weekend or something. Uh, maybe some other time. I'll just block my calendar for this, maybe for after the heat death of the universe. Anyway, the show isn't for another half hour. I wanted to ask you before, what did you think of your fortune? Uh, I kind of forgot. You got the judgment? Doesn't ring a bell? Oh, well. Uh, how would you like another? Eh, I got time to kill, sure. She pulls her deck of tarot cards from somewhere. Where the fuck did she hide these things? Maybe from her opai, I don't know. Anyway, she fans the deck out. Alright, take one. I take one random and show it to her. Oh my, inverted empress. You need to be wary about future negligence, Anon. The fuck does that mean? Uh, gotta go, nature calls. See you on the show. She flees in denim pissing fear. Well then, what was I doing? Oh yeah, I step up to the stage to see the band's point of view. And then promptly trip. Ah, oh, what the fuck was that? There's a loose cord over my foot. That's probably not good for the show. I stand up and wipe the dust from my pants. Trish is the organizer. Right now she's giving Reed a lecture on why it's probably a bad idea to put carfentanil in the smoke machine. Hey Trish! Trish looks over, Trish looks over her shoulder and Reed's face lights up. Can you come here a second? Trish sighs, points between her eyes and Reed's and stomps over to the stage. What do you want, skinny? I just trip on one of the wires up here. Sucks to be you. Bitch. Should I plug them all into a surge protector so you guys don't fall during the concert? What? No, of course not. We won't trip. I have that on good authority. Who's? Reads. And you trust his word on something like this? Sure. He's the expert on this stuff and all. Before I can object, Trish turns away and turns after Reed who is hunted over the smoke machine pungent fumes waiting from its exposed innards. A raft- wafting. Rafting. Well, it seems like he's got that handled. Trish seems pretty confident that Reed knows what he's doing with the stage, but Reed obviously doesn't understand cable management. I'm saving this everybody, I'm gonna end this video right here, hope you liked the video. Uh, you know what it is, you know, if you want more, keep watching my videos of like you know what you want really so i get the hint like maybe i'm gonna focus on this game instead other than that thank you for watching see ya you know the drill subscribe do whatever good luck on whatever you're doing and good night sweet dreams everybody